sometimes. I, yeah, I mean, sometimes it's back to back to like back to back to back to back. Sometimes it's hard. Uh, I think uh, one of them things is tricky. But we are in it now. We are on FOD, game one. Oh, what is that grab from the side platform? No! No! <laughs> no! Ref, ref, I object. <laughs> Can we get a Ooh. replay? Oh my god, he finds a drill into the roll read. Oh my god, he almost... Oh, that's another Hungrybox classic. The wave dash turnaround grab. He does it out of shield. He, apparently he does it out of crouch, so... Interesting stuff there. Sometimes you're, you're so used to grab only being a forward-facing move that mm -hmm. Hungrybox being able to grab backwards is, like, jarring. <laughs> oh, and there we... We had talked about it before, but we already see the edge guarding play there. That was a bit of a simple one. He was far enough off stage that he didn't have too many options, but uh, Hungrybox picking the right choice and just going for the ledge hog to close out the first stock. Mm -hmm. Ooh, finding the up tilt here. Sending him up way high up. Now Hungrybox's job is to kind of make this stock last as long as possible and make Marth kind of earn it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, the pound oh, barely oh, 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 oh. Forward smash, finding all the right moves, but he gets the SDI and the jab. Insane. Puff's jab. It used to be so guaranteed. And now in the last like week, we saw Ginger get a crazy SDI on it last week at the SCL. Now we see mm -hmm. Marth being able to do it too. It's like, jeez. <laughs> all right. Ooh, okay. Nice way you are to get the fair to push hungry box off but again remember this is all just extra credit for age box he's just trying to find whatever percent he can and just to force his for, force his opponent to work for it and honestly you know one of the things that i think doesn't get talked about enough of age box oh. is the mental game that he plays like the mental damage he puts on his opponent ah. I, okay. the ludwig the ludwig and grin oh no, he goes with the double <laughs> f smash and it works no. <laughs> <laughs> no! Call the ref! <laughs> okay, okay, we get the kill, but he did eat 90% and basically a full minute and a half to find that one kill. That's uh, oh a my lot God. of work. Jeez. I like that he did neutral B forward smash, forward smash while you were talking about the mental damage that Hungerbox does to his opponent. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he almost got the rest there on the crouch grab, but instead goes for the grab backwards. And he finds oh. the rest eventually. Now he's up three stocks to one. And it was such a awkward rest that you Martha even di'd it wrong and ends up getting the star KO so he doesn't even get punished for it. Yep. It's not the biggest loss because Hungerbox was at four percent so it like went to ah! Oh he just misses. Oh uh, down there into the dash dance to get the grab. Pretty nice stuff knowing that kinda of hard to convert down air straight into grab if she's just holding down and trying to crouch it and you don't want to risk your stock on that so Okay. Yumarth putting out a lot of hitboxes, but not finding anything. Yeah. Puff just sort of chilling. Hungrybox is so hard to hit. <laughs> mm -hmm, <laughs> he, mm -hmm. he just makes such good decisions mm -hmm. all the time. And then the moment you're like, oh, all right, I just can't hit him. He's just playing defense. Boom, he strikes at you and like mm -hmm. kind of overreaches and goes into your, your zone with something very relevant, right? Like he always hits you with something pretty meaningful. So yeah, uh, there... dash grab there. There we saw some of that uh, new school tech from Umarth. He goes for the back throw and then uh, pivot F smashes to get the stock. So he's only down one stock, but he's already at 90%, 100%. This is rough. That Fine. back air might one just more back air. Yep. serve his doom. I don't think he can make it back. Yeah. Yep. Still had a jump, but it was still too far out. Hungry Box looking very clean that game. Felt like he had control center stage most of the game and then would mm -hmm. lunge out into the corner and... He, did, he only needed to be correct some of the time, right? Because he was playing such advantageous mix-ups. Um, so re really good positioning from Hungrybox. Mm -hmm. I feel like he was just consistently mm -hmm. playing in the right spot and avoiding all the things he needed to avoid. Mm -hmm. And even the first stock, he lived to like 150 or something, kind of yeah. playing around the correct kill setups and threats and stuff. So even though Umarth has the tech, it's not trivial to kill Hungrybox even with it. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and to, to me, that, that first stock by Hungrybox really defined the whole game right? He gets the kill early, and then he lives for like a minute and a half and pulls Umarth up to like 90%, even though he started the second stock, Umarth's second start at stock at like 80 or 90 himself already, so um, it just felt like Umarth had to work too hard for that first kill that then he was just so far behind. Yep. Oh. Okay, I like the way I, I like the way that Umarth took space there. It was very incremental, very well, uh, well protected right like he came forward with mm -hmm. a little bit of a fair and then he did a fair in place and then a slightly approaching fair again so he's protecting his space and, and taking room Ooh. quite nicely Ooh. i like that too wow throw out the haymaker 100 percent success rate why not 
<laughs> like to see it. And yeah, I agree. The, the, he's playing it like, like uh, we kind of talked about how last game Hungerbox had center stage for most of the game. And mm -hmm. uh, that that stock, Umarth, was largely in control there. He kind of had the center stage and worked his way into some corner pressure situations and then finally threw out Haymaker. Mm -hmm. get it, so. Good adaptations there. Super late forward there. Catch. Oh, this is hard to avoid. Oh, okay, he goes to the ledge. <laughs> <laughs> what a funny interaction to end that out. Where he yeah. talks, just goes for the short back and forth to keep himself far away from Umarth. That was yep. hilarious. You actually have to be really careful going all the way to the corner. Uh, I don't know if Umarth like, knows it, but you can shield to let Puff go through you and then unshield. And if Puff turns around to hit you from behind, she falls off stage and dies. <laughs> right, right. So, got a little, little trickery you can do there. <laughs> Ooh, and that back air actually just outright kills Umarth. He had uh, somehow already given his double jump, and so he's just stuck too far off stage and dead. But he's still got 100% lead. So this is another case where if HBox can get a bunch of extra credit and bring it back to even or better, that would be really rough for Umarth. If Umarth can close this out pretty cleanly, he can maintain a, a shot. Oh, he finds a pound! Pound is definitely the scariest move Puff has at low percents. Oh, and he gets a jump read, the last down throw. He went for a back air, and Umarth jumped. Hungerbox immediately taking note of that and reading the jump the second, uh, the, the very next down throw, basically. 100% success rate. Yeah, Umarth, he goes for this uh, sort of Haymaker F smash. This time it's a wave dash forward F smash. Um, and he's just able to catch Hungrybox, uh, not respecting his space quite enough. Yep. And you see how Hungrybox doing a lot of crouch and stuff. He's kind of playing around the grab, trying to bait mm -hmm. the grab. And uh, mm -hmm. you, you can bait the dash grab because the dash grab, can oh, the forward air doesn't hit. But yeah, you kind of bait the grab and then you, you mix up spot dodge and roll and swinging and stuff. But it's also susceptible to F smash where you can kind of just like circumvent. Okay, hungry box. A little too much Ludwig there. <laughs> okay. You are trying to maintain this lead here. He's already at 100%, but he's making it hard for HBox to kill him. Sort of the, the last oh. Another wave dash forward F smash, man. That seems to be 100% really... success rate. <laughs> Insane. Yeah, Reaper just catching three. HBox off guard. Yep. It'll be interesting to see if Hungrybox can find a punish on those, because uh, it, it's kind of a big risk. Uh, Puff can shield it and potentially rest out of shield, so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was a, a nice recovery there from you. He uses the, uh, you know, straight drop down up B with the perfect timing to get the sweet spot mm -hmm. uh, a couple times in a row. Makes it really tricky to recognize when he's going to come off the ledge. So he's able to make it back, but HBox able to clean it up anyway. Two stocks to one here. Oh, fancy movement from Hungrybox there. But Umarth avoids the pound that was thrown out a little bit ago, but doesn't dodge the next one. Can't get too much off of it, though. Oh, man. And these fairs, again, it seems like Umarth, he's sort of mixing up, just protecting his face with fair and nair, and then just wave dash forward F smashing uh, sort of randomly. And that's been working pretty well for him. Okay, Hungrybox. <laughs> Uh... <laughs> my people need me i need to go <laughs> i thought i thought i saw him side beat to the left as, as he like jumped and started going yeah. down and out and then like i'm like looking at the puff as she's spinning and i like couldn't quite tell whether she was spinning counterclockwise or clockwise <laughs> and i'm like is it did he just I and thought then, that yeah. Puff could always turn around. Like, if you're just holding right and you let go of B, I thought she can always turn around. But maybe not. I'm not really sure. So, Or maybe he just, his people needed him, you know, and he needed to go. So, yeah, I respect I mean, it. <laughs> he was definitely uh, very, very, very far in the corner there. Um, yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> I see in the chat someone says he said, rollout is actually pretty good. <laughs> I mean, it looked pretty good there, you know, so I'm not going to doubt it. Uh, uh, I, I will say it had a 0% success rate, and it got punished once and led to an SD1, so... Yeah, but I mean, that's you can't just use stats, you know? That's true, you gotta... You how, gotta how does it look on the eye test, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> look with your heart. Yeah, we need, we need strong, robust, neutral bees, and, uh, you know... <laughs> is what it is, yeah. All right, oh. so we're going to jump into game three here. We're going to go to Dreamland. Uh, canonically, Mars worst stage because he gets neutered on his combo game with the side platforms. And also canonically, Puff's best stage because she can live forever on the huge blast. Yep. Uh, and so, in, Yeah, and in this stage, the, the punish game, is it's it's more just that Mars kill setups don't kill us soon. 
right? Mm -hmm. I don't think his his punish game doesn't change that. Like this stuff still kind of works. He still gets his like weird mm -hmm. down throw chain grab, still 40 and like four throw four airs and stuff. Uh, but ultimately, the tipper forward smash won't kill quite as early. You'll you'll need to get like 20% more, maybe 30% more. So it's gonna be interesting to see how that goes. And if Hungry Box can land the edge guards, then it's not gonna Ooh. matter for him. So. Oh, and he just goes for the S-Smash once again, catches H-Box, dropping through the platform there. Okay, he's yep, got H-Box uh... up to 100%. This is where the confirms start looking for kills. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if he finds a tipper here, it probably still kills, unless he goes across the entire stage. But Hungrybox, with the patented edge guards, closes out of stock here and is able to survive. Plenty more punishment to go for this stock if he plays around the right setups. Okay. Hbox using the side and top platform to make it difficult for Umarth to challenge him. Umarth catching Hbox coming down from the platform once again. Uh, that seems to be something that Umarth's got a pretty good read on. Oh. And oh my god, the wave dash forward F-Smash, man. It just keeps working. Can't keep getting away with it. <laughs> oh. I, I, I really feel like he can't, right? Like Hbox <laughs> has to be able to get away. <laughs> You're like, Wait. no, but but like actually, he can't keep getting away with it, what? <laughs> like... <laughs> okay. Umarth has done a great job once he finds the ledge getting back on stage, which is actually like not trivial for Marth, right? Like, right, he, for sure. He, he doesn't have the best options off the ledge, and Umarth has made it. Oh. Okay, oh, this time he misses the pivot tipper. Oh, goes for the F smash anyway. Doesn't find it, but finds the up B to get Puff off him at least. Ooh, goes for the down tilt on the crouching Puff. Doesn't get punished there, so avoids a potential crouch rest. He's been going for the dash grabs at all the right spots, hasn't gotten crouched one time on his mm -hmm. grab. Definitely looks pretty well rehearsed in this matchup. Yeah, absolutely. Ooh, the back air comes out. Ooh, finds the ledge. Does get past Puff. Puff was disrespecting the ledge a little bit too hard. She was uh, super far up there. <laughs> Yeah, once again, Umarth really impressing me with his off-ledge game. I feel like that's mm -hmm. something that, that Umarth should not be able to get away with, and the fact that he is just says that he's got a really good game plan Ooh. set up from that position. Kind of tough for H-Box. Oh, oh my the god, the pound flips. Yeah, insane. Does the drill from the ledge again. Is it challenges the sweet spot, but can't quite get him. That was a tricky situation. Hungerbox was putting on a ton of pressure, but it was, it was tricky to find the hit there, but Umarth correctly navigates around it and gets right back on stage. Now we're back on the center stage game. Oh, he actually doesn't get shield poked there. He might have been light shielding, I think. Puff's drill is like really hard not like to avoid a shield poke because mm -hmm. you can't angle your shield once it hits. Like mm -hmm. the multi-hit centers your shield and then the rest of the hits will kind of like hit against the centered shield. So she can always aim for your feet, but he finds the up out of shield for the kill. Dang, you are finding these kill setups, man. And by setups, I mean raw kill moves in neutral. <laughs> yeah. That time he did have to get Puff up to 170 before he found the kill, but he did so in a way that like didn't feel that bad. Yeah, yeah. Right? Still feels very even here so far. You mark with a slight lead, but you know, one hit away. Fourth throw, let's see if he can turn this into an edge guard. Ooh, just falls to the ledge. Hungerbox definitely struggling with some of these close to the ledge mix-ups. Mm-hmm. Hbox is able to find the back air there, so he is gonna bring it back to two socks apiece. He only took 17%, so this game is very even. Insurmountable lead, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, okay, so F tilt becoming part of Umarth's game as we watch. Uh, that's like not something he was showing really at all the first couple Ooh. games. Oh! Pound definitely better on platform stages. We saw him land quite a lot of pounds on FD actually, but he almost never was able to lead into like a big conversion at these low percents. But on this one, it led to a tech chase of which Marth missed the tech, so he was able to convert into the rest pretty easily. But regardless, you always have a chance of getting the tech chase rest. So very nice conversion there from Hungrybox to kind of finally get a big payoff for these pounds that he has been landing pretty consistently. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and we're now two out of two by Umarth on star KOs on the rest. Mm -hmm. um, in this case in particular, right, I, I think Puff was at high enough percent where it could have really been a problem. Ooh. Ooh. And yeah, there we see the edge guard played out very well by Hbox. He's able to get the edge hog and then when Umarth up he's early to get on stage he just goes for the rest to close out the game mm -hmm. yeah, really that, nice stuff from hbox that felt like a brutal counter pick it and it mm -hmm. wasn't even really the kill setup stuff that we talked about it was just more about how hungry box maneuvered the stage he just mm -hmm. felt way better at like because like on fd it's hard to not get cornered right like puff would go up and then fall in the corner and it's just, just this giant sword and then eventually he waved that forward up smashes and it's huge but on this stage he could really maneuver and like 
mm-hmm. you don't know where he's mm-hmm. gonna land there's a top platform there's a side platform there's like a lot of stage to go to and stuff mm-hmm. so it felt way harder to kind of pin him down and then mm-hmm. he could you know finagle his way to a good position and then play advantageous mix-ups from there and then he only needed one or two of those big reads where he found his own haymaker with the pound and the rest so mm-hmm. yeah, kind of a, a stage seemed to matter quite a lot compared to the previous game there mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah and now i suspect that you martha is going to take us to uh, pokemon here for game four um and i i agree with you that i felt that the the way that Hbox played the sa- the space between the side platform and top platform was really challenging for uh, you, Mark, to deal with. And so now that we've taken the top platform away from Hbox, I wonder how he's going to try to find that kind of space on the stage. <laughs> yep. Definitely Hungerbox is also a master of the side platform. The pound barely avoids the platform tech chase there. Good DI from you, Mark, there. Good DI in. And yeah, Hungerbox using this... Oh! All right, oh. Well, he closed out of stock immediately. Damn. Kind of unfortunate for me, Marth. I guess he just didn't jump early enough or something. I, that looked really weird. I think he could have been able to survive. I love Hungry Box's wave dashes back and forth on the platform. I he's been doing it for years. I don't really know why, but it always works. <laughs> oh, there we finally see him crouch under a grab. That's been something that you, Marth, has been really careful about throughout the set. Um, oh, this could be a rest. Yeah, yeah. brutal. Oh. We see the up B. Kind of wishing he had a top platform that time. Because uh, on Dreamland, that's way harder to punish as he could land on the top platform. But on this stage, you're kind of just a sitting duck once you fall. So, he, I, I, and, I don't know. <laughs> once, it's, once again, you know, we're three for three on Star KOs. That's like a huge problem, mm-hmm. right? This That yeah. should have at least been a stock trade. And the fact that Umarth ends up going... True. Uh, and whacking the front of the screen is, is such a problem, actually. Yeah, and that one in particular was, like, like everybody knew he was getting rested there. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, he was he was so incredibly doomed for so yeah. long before the rest actually hit. Um, so, yeah, that that's a bit unfortunate. Umarth doing his best to try to come back here. You see the rollout here as the recovery oh, into option. the forward smash. If he had hit that forward smash, I would have <laughs> loved it. Would have been a huge fan. <laughs> Ooh, okay. You are, I, I do feel like, I'm, I, I think, I think I'm feeling desperation from you, Mark. I, mm-hmm. I'm not seeing the same kind of space control that we were seeing earlier in the set that was working out so well for him. Um, I feel like he's lunging a bit more. Um, we're yeah. also, you know, he's moved away from the wave dash forward F smash haymaker that actually worked so well. For him. Oh my God, good trade. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that works out. Uh, it is now three stocks to one. H box looking to seal this and, and his spot in winners finals pretty cleanly here. Yeah, this is looking like a really hard comeback to make. Uh, mm-hmm. Puff and most notably Hungry Box. Uh, I feel like he's just hard to make comebacks on, man. Like this guy can yeah. grind you out. And I, it's funny because I hear so many players talk about how playing H Box is like very draining. Mm-hmm. Um, Zane has even talked about how like, you know, the the year uh, before he be- basically became the best in the world, <laughs> he was like, had like five game five sets with Hungry Box that were all like really close. Um, mm-hmm. He lost all of them, right? Mm-hmm. And he talked about how like in, his losers brackets after those were also always so hard. He would like be drained just after the one set with Hungry Box. Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. like I can't play after that. It's so hard, you know. Um, but that's every set for Hungry Box. Like mm-hmm, he's he's mm-hmm. doing this all the time, and he's just like willing to just put in that grind. And like you can 